Greetings everyone and welcome to Back to Ashes, my name is Phoenix. Down in the description you will find the links to how to become a member, buy me a coffee as a special thank you, and the merch store. If you are new here and enjoy these kinds of stories, or if you have been here and haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Not only does this help the algorithm, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes, for once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck and get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled, True Creepy Encounters. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads for the remainder of the video. Hi everyone. So I'm 33 now, but when I was 20, I was pretty oblivious to dangerous situations. I grew up pretty sheltered and knew to say no to drugs. One night, I was at my friend's party, and a guy from halfway across the street crashed said party. I had no clue what halfway houses were. My friend thought he was my friend, and I thought he was her friend. The guy and I got along pretty well and ended up casually dating for a little bit. He ended up getting kicked out of his halfway house and moved in with one of his friends. One day, the friend asked if we could get a ride, and I said, sure not knowing the bad things that were to come. He asked me to go to a check cashing store a mile away, which was fine. After we got there, we went to a gas station per his request. When we got there, he got out of the car to speak to a guy in an old rusty truck. When he got back in the car, he asked me to follow said truck. At this point, it was starting to get really weird. We got to a fast food joint and the friend left my car again. I asked the guy I was dating what the hell was going on, and he said, Oh, he's just buying drugs. The truck guy's girlfriend will come into your car as collateral while he's waiting to get there. I should have said hell no and driven off. But again, I was an oblivious 20-year-old. A lady who looked like she was on crack got into the car and started telling us about her five kids. This whole time, I was wondering, what the hell? I just got myself into, and was now terrified of the friend as he seemed to be getting angry and on the edge. Thankfully, the guy came back, the lady left, and I drove them home. I got out of there very fast and pretty much never saw either of those guys again. What would you have done in this situation? In the early-ish 2000s, I was killing time outside a small concert venue, and it was going to be a while for the band to start, so I decided to walk around the neighborhood a while and text my friends to see when they were showing up. It wasn't a bad neighborhood, and I didn't feel unsafe walking around, but at night most things were closed, so there wasn't really anybody else around. As I was walking and looking at my phone, this guy in an SUV, like in his Yuzu Rodeo or something like that, pulled up halfway on the sidewalk right next to me and said something to the point of, Hey, do you need a ride? I was slightly startled, but at first I thought he was harmless. To be fair, I was in my skinny jeans, faux hawk, emo phase, and he might have just thought I'd look like a male sex worker. When I took a closer look at him, he had his shirt off and was all sweaty and kind of bigger, stocky guy. He tried again in a more seductive sounding voice, saying, Really? I don't mind giving you a ride? I was pretty creeped out, but tried to be friendly. I just kept my distance and said, Uh, thanks, but I'm good. I'm just waiting for a concert to start. Immediately, his facial expression changed from friendly to extremely angry, and he peeled out down the street so fast that his vehicle was sort of fishtailing. 
He could have been an undercover cop trying to bust someone for prostitution, or just a guy trying to find a sexual encounter. It was in a city in Florida where there was a lot of this kind of thing going on, but he gave me serious Jeffrey Dahmer vibes after he got angry and drove off. I got the feeling that if I got in his car, he would have taken me somewhere and put me in his fridge. This happened about a decade ago, when I was 19. At the time, I rented an apartment in a west side neighborhood of Chicago with my sister. She was a year older than me. We both worked hospitality jobs in the city, and we both had pretty robust social lives, so it was fairly typical for one or both of us to get home at weird hours or be out all night. I'd take the pink line to and from work, at this point in my life, I was pretty used to being catcalled, walking down the street. I've been flashed on public transportation a few times. Men would bump into me from behind on packed trains. Basically, the usual amount of sexual harassment for a young girl living in the city. Not much fazed me. Of course it was uncomfortable, but I was never truly terrified. Until this one particular night. That night, I was coming home from work well after midnight. The train car I was in had been empty for most of the ride. One stop before mine, a man gets on and sits down in my car. I looked up and saw this new passenger enter the car. We made eye contact. Immediately, I felt a hair stand up on the back of my neck. I knew I had just made a mistake, that this might be interpreted as some sort of invitation. I quickly looked away, but felt him watching me as the train pulled away from the station. Since my stop was only one stop away, I decided to wait until the last second to stand up and exit the car, just in case he tried to follow me. Well, he did. He hung back about 30 feet at first, but I felt the gap between us closing, and his footsteps were getting louder. Then I hear him trying to catch my attention, saying, Hey! He catches up to me and starts speaking to me, like any other man trying to chat me would. I still couldn't shake the feeling of genuine fear I've had since first locking eyes with him in the train car. He asks where I'm headed, and I told him I was going home. He asked me if there was anyone waiting for me up this late. I told him my boyfriend was. In reality, I knew my sister was working a night shift and I was going home to an empty apartment. Then, he pulled his shirt to the side, exposing a gun in his waistband. In a joking tone, he said he'd fight my boyfriend for me. I laughed long and just kept walking. We were walking down Cermak, which is a pretty busy street, even that late at night. I knew I couldn't let him follow me into the apartment, so when I came to cross the street where I should have turned, I just kept walking and kept going straight. Eventually, I had walked far enough that I passed the stop where he had originally got on the train. He walked alongside me for a while, then dropped back and followed me for a while, and eventually stopped. I thought I would be relieved once I had shaken him, but as soon as I couldn't see him anymore, my fear only heightened. I still had to double back to my apartment somehow and the trains had stopped running at 2 a.m. I figured he knew I walked too far and would have to turn around, so I thought it was possible he was posted up somewhere on Cermak, waiting for me. I turned off and walked a few blocks north, and then started my one-mile walk back west toward my apartment. The walk back was excruciating. Since I was now off the main road, it was much darker, and there was absolutely nobody around. I kept telling myself I had to get home safe and sound for my sister, because she'd never be able to live with herself if something happened to me. I kept putting one foot in front of the other, and when I finally made it to my apartment and locked the door behind me, I collapsed in a puddle of tears. Ten years later on, I've never felt fear again like I did that night. 
To this day, I've never told my sister about it. I used to live in a small neighborhood from ages 13 to 18. This took place when I was around 15. I spent most of my time just walking around the neighborhood listening to my MP3 player. Wow, I feel old just typing that. There was a guy around the same age as me that lived maybe five or so houses down from me. From neighborhood gossip, I learned that he was homeschooled and had been in and out of juvie due to his anger issues. He was almost always outside, and sometimes when I passed his house, he would start following me. I was smart enough to always have my music down low enough to be able to hear and be aware of my surroundings. At first, I just passed it off as he just ended up walking the same time of day I did. Looking back, I was truly stupid. As time passed, he got close and closer to me when following until he eventually decided to come right up to me at my side. He said some truly heinous things that I will not repeat here. I mean, he was right in my ear when he was talking. I ran home and told my sister. She was basically the one who raised me. She told me I was lying and to stop making up stories. For a while, I stopped going out walking until I needed the fresh air and exercise, and tried again maybe two months later. Sure enough, there he was, and came right up behind me and started to say things again. I turned my music up and ignored him. This is what I continued to do every day, until he got tired of me ignoring him, I guess, because one day he grabbed my arm. I couldn't get away, and then he grabbed the back of my neck and told me that I should know better than to ignore him. Again, I told my sister. She didn't believe me, and I stopped going out yet again. Two weeks later, I woke up to loud bangs on my bedroom wall. There was a garage on both sides of the house, and the wall of my bedroom shared a wall with one of those garages. This garage was unfinished. There wasn't even concrete down, and it was easily accessible from outside as it was missing the door at the back of the house. My sister was out of town, and my dad was deaf and bedridden, so there was just me in the house, able to do anything. My bedroom also had a door to go outside, so I ran over and locked it. I laid down and waited for the banging to stop, but it never did. My cousin and her boyfriend lived down the street, so I called her, and she sent her boyfriend down to see what it was. Her boyfriend pulled right into the backyard and right up to the door leading into the garage. His headlights filled the garage and out ran the guy from down the street, holding a very large knife. He took off running and my cousin's boyfriend followed. It was at this time I called the police. They came and took a statement but said there was nothing they could do because other than going into the garage and trespassing, he actually didn't do anything. I never took a walk in that neighborhood ever again. I still wonder how he knew what wall to bang on. How did he know I was on the other side of it? How did he know my sister was gone or that my dad was bedridden and couldn't do anything? I never locked the door, so had he been in my house to know? What would have happened if he had gotten inside? It still gives me the creeps. This happened at around 15 years ago, and nothing became of it, but it was so weird I think about it regularly. I was 16 years old at the time. It was early evening, so getting dark but not yet pitch black and I was walking home from the bus stop after seeing some of my friends. I just turned from the main road onto my quiet street when I heard my name being called by a male voice. I was still trying to figure out where the noise was coming from when I see this guy jumping out of a car and jogging straight towards me, smiling. 
Again, he says my name and asks me how I've been. As he gets closer, I'm waiting for the penny to drop, but even when he's close up, I realize I do not know this man, and it's clear from my face. I'm confused. Seeing my confusion, he says, Don't you remember me? It's me. X. And I said, uh, No, sorry, I, I don't remember meeting you before. Um, how do you know me by name? He says something incredibly vague, that he's my ex's friend. And I say, okay, but what's my ex's name then? And he starts laughing. I'm absolutely convinced we had never crossed paths before in our entire life. And he looked like he was in his 20s. So how would he know my ex, who was my age? He still had this unwavering, creepy smile on his face. I think he was either high or drunk, but I started to feel unnerved and wanted to end the conversation. A-S-A-B. He asked me to come hang out with him, and I say, no, sorry, I need to get home. He's being insistent, but I'm being firm and saying I need to get home. I'll get in trouble if I'm late. My parents are expecting me, etc. And I just try to end the conversation politely by saying, nice to see you, but I have to go. And I start walking away. He seems to accept it and thankfully goes back to his car. And I feel relieved to see him drive away again. Until I turn the corner. He's parked literally over my house's driveway and is standing outside his car. Again with this weird, intense smile. Now I am fully freaking out. He's blocking my entrance to my house. I can't figure out if it's a fluke or if he knows where I live, but I don't want to walk into my house while he's there. I literally stop in my tracks and he again walks towards me and starts with the, come hang out, we'll go for a drive, etc. I'm freaked out and also annoyed at the fact that he's not leaving it alone. So I say, dude, I don't know you. I'm not going to go anywhere for a drive with some random guy. He then laughs and points to his car and says, but I'm with my friend. And for the first time, I look into the car and I see a girl looking at me. She looks high out of her mind and is just staring directly at me. Honestly, my heart dropped looking at her face. She looked miserable and so spaced out. I can't remember how I got rid of him, but I just stood my ground and kept saying, no, I do not want to go for a ride. I'm going home, etc. I stood in the same spot. There was no way I was going into my house while he was there, until he eventually gave up, got back into his car, and drove away, all while this girl still stared at me. Like I said, nothing ever came from it. I never again saw the guy. I have no idea how he knew my name. The girl in the car looked older than me, at least in her 20s, I'd say most likely. So at the same time, I assumed she knew what she was doing. But every so often, I think of her and wonder if she needed help, or maybe it was all innocent. I hope she's okay though. I encountered this on the 2nd of January, two days ago when I was asleep in my room. I'm a 18-year-old female living in Singapore with my parents. I'm sorry if it's pretty long, but I would appreciate it if you take your time and listen to my story because I would appreciate your thoughts on the situation. In my family, it's only me and my mom and my stepdad living in a very small apartment. I have my own bedroom as I'm the only child. My parents took the smaller room and I got the master bedroom, which has a big window that is facing the back of our house. For my bedroom, there's a big space outside our windows that's between every apartment unit over here. So there's no way someone would unintentionally stand near my window. You have to walk in and go a few turns before coming here. 
I eventually fell asleep at around 11 p.m. and I forgot to close my blackout curtains for my window. Even though it's a frosted window, anyone can only see through it if they stood close enough for it for a closer look. Exactly at 1.23 a.m., I checked the time when I accidentally woke up. I heard three loud knocks on my room window, which eventually woke me up as I'm a very light sleeper. At where I'm sleeping, my window is on the right corner and I can see whatever shadow that gets through it at day or night. On that night, I didn't switch up any of my light, so it was total darkness, except for my table lamp that was shining at me at high brightness. At first, I was sleeping while facing my room door, which is on the left so I had an automatic response to turn my head and look at what's knocking on my window. To my surprise, I saw a silhouette of a man's head that was clearly visible through my window. I had goosebumps and I froze because I was unsure of what to do as the curtains were wide open, so obviously that man can see me through my window. Despite my parents' room being right next to mine, I went into shock and had to call my mom, she was asleep of course, to help me check if I was tripping and to close my curtains for me. I told her what I saw afterwards. In the end, she advised me to sleep in the living room for the meantime to calm myself down. I felt really uneasy at night. I couldn't go back to sleep. Since I stayed awake that same night, I heard three more knocks coming from my bedroom at 3 a.m which of course, I had to assume it came from the window before this happened. My curtains were already closed and blocking my window's view, so I thought that it'll be fine for me to go ahead and get a little look on who or what knocked on my window. The only difference this time is that the knock was louder, but slower, like the ones you would experience as if you're in an old haunted house. Come to think about it now, I wished I stayed curious and stayed in my living room. I had my face and hand holding onto the window since I had to get a closer and clearer look since I didn't see a silhouette when I was standing from a distance from the window and me, still being paranoid from what happened hours before. I saw a man standing outside my room window, about four meters apart, standing and staring straight right at me who's currently frozen in place at the window when I saw him, wearing gray long pants and a black t-shirt, and really, really pale skin. It looked as if he had no expression when he saw me. By this time it happened, I wasn't sure if it was the same man that stood outside at around 1.30. As much as I was tired that night, I knew I was not hearing things or seeing hallucinations. I was perfectly wide awake when I saw that man. Moral of the story, always check your windows before you fall asleep, and best to get out a blackout curtain to protect yourself. Of course, guard your window with protective measures. I've been working for a large department store in the UK for just over a year now. This story happened when I was 16. It was a late evening, around 9 p.m. or so, as we stay open late for the Christmas rush. I was walking across the shop floor when a man brushed very close to me. I'm often in my own world at work and this made me jump a little. He must have noticed this because he said, Hello? I responded, and he asked me how I was. I said, I'm great, how are you? He nodded and walked towards the doors out into the car park. I didn't think much of this at all, but it did catch me off guard. I decided to walk across to the other side of the shop. Bear in mind the floor plan is massive. I continue tidying rails there. I hear a man shout from a few meters away, and I look up to see the same guy again. It's only now that I really took notice of his appearance. He had a large tattoo of a dagger on his right cheekbone and was wearing a black jumper with the hood up. 
He was about a foot taller than me and clearly much older. I asked him if he needed any help and he gestured for me to come closer to him. I tend to freeze and follow instructions in this situation, which is not exactly the best survival instinct. I naively thought he was just wanting to know which exit he needed. He asked me what my name was and I told him. You've got really pretty eyes, he said, and at this point I was getting a little freaked out. I thanked him hesitantly and turned to leave, but he put his hand on my forearm. Again, I kind of froze. Have you got a boyfriend? Have you got Snapchat? Can I get your number? He became more and more persistent, and I just wanted him to leave. I told him that number one, I was working, and number two, I'm underage. He then asked me how old, and I told him I was 16. Again, I don't know why I answered him, but my brain just shut down. To which he responded, it could work. At this point, I was really shaken up and did not know what to do. Thankfully, one of my male colleagues walked up to me to ask a question, making him leave, winking at me as he did so. Noticing my distress, he asked me what had happened, and I explained the situation. He urged me to report it, but I was hesitant, as I didn't want to inconvenience anyone or get them into trouble. However, there are a lot of teenage girls that work in the shop, and I wouldn't want them to be targeted. So I told one of the managers. They notified the store security and sent me off the shop floor to get some coffee and calm down. I came back, finished my shift, and went to leave. The security guy stopped me on the way out and told me that he didn't mean to alarm me, but they managed to track the man's car and he was parked inside of it. They said there was a high probability he was waiting for me and I shouldn't go out there by myself, just as a precaution. He escorted me to my mom's car and we drove home. I am so thankful that nothing ended up happening to me that night. I often think about what would have happened if my friend didn't persuade me to report it, and I went outside, alone. This story happened about a year ago, but still creeps me out when I think about it. That being said, it's a little lengthy, but I think it fits. I'm an adult male with a tall build at about 250 pounds who lives with my dog. My neighbor is considered one of the nicer ones in my city, but isn't without its share of crime incidents. Most of these tend to be car break-ins where people are looking for easy grabs left in plain sight. And in the worst cases, the rare robbery of college students not far from the area or people walking around who were otherwise not paying attention to their surroundings. Growing up, I lived in a much rougher part of the city, so being alert and observant of one's surroundings has always been second nature to me, especially at night. So much so that when my dog and I go for his nightly walk, he knows that it's all about the business of doing his business and doing it quickly so, no dilly-dallying. On this particular night, I was running late with a work project that had to be completed on time, and our walk was delayed about an hour past our regular time to 10 p.m. I absolutely hate going out too late. Already feeling anxious about missing our regular time when other dog owners are out doing the same, something told me to make sure I carried this time so after, I got my dog in his harness and out the door. We started on our usual walk up the street, moving at a brisk pace. At this hour, the street is completely empty of pedestrians or car traffic, just eerily quiet. We get about halfway up the street before he starts sniffing around for a good area, when I spot a red pickup truck flying down the street, well over the speed limit. The truck eventually comes to a screeching halt in the middle of the street, about 30 feet ahead of us. 
As soon as he hit the brakes, I quickly walked us a little further up as to put a row of the sporadically space parked cars on the street in between us and continued walking while maintaining eyes on the truck. As we walked by, the door opened and a guy gets out and is bent over coughing profusely, and I do mean a lot, a lot, and hacking up spit and whatnot in the middle of the street while holding onto the inside of his truck door with tenant windows. My dog and I both keep eyes on this guy as we're walking past, about 25 feet distant, from him. He then looks up at me while still keeping one arm inside of the car door and says, Hey, can you come here for a second? Without breaking a stride, I say, Yeah, probably not going to do that while rotating my body and walking backwards as we pass him as to not turn my back to him. While still backing away on our path, I ask him what's wrong. He says, I'm not feeling well. Can you please just come here? While still backing away, I tell him no, plainly, and that he can pull into any of the parking spaces on his side of the street and rest there until he feels better, or that I can call him an ambulance if he's really that bad off. Upon hearing this, his face contorted and went into a snarl. He was also suddenly no longer having coughing fits or under any sort of visible physical distress. Clearly pissed that I wouldn't cooperate, he then slightly closes the door a little, so that it's still ajar, but his arm that was behind it is concealed behind his back now and he started walking towards us, saying, Please come here, sir. I told you that I'm not feeling well. I then clip my dog's leash to my belt and get parallel against the side of the large SUV, parked on my side of the street, leaving roughly about 20 feet between us. I also move my hand behind my back to the waistband and tell him that's close enough from behind the vehicle. He then stares at me, and I can literally see him working the math in his head on the chances of me bluffing, and he turns around and goes back to his truck, but he doesn't leave. He reaches inside with a concealed hand and hides for about 10 seconds before he looks back at me over his shoulder and stares for 10 more seconds, only to see that I'm staring at him also. I haven't left my position next to that buffer vehicle, nor turned my back to him. He says something to someone else in the passenger seat who is obscured by the tent, and then very quickly hops in, slams the door, and speeds back off up the street into the night. Hello everyone, I finally decided to write my story to share with you. I'm a 34 year old female and unmarried, which means I occasionally get the pleasure of watching my niece and nephew while my sister and brother-in-law go on their bi-weekly date nights. This has been going on for the past two months. I previously didn't have much contact with her and her family for one reason or another. But in my efforts to become the cool aunt, I've been trying to get to know my niece and nephew a little better. They are 8 and 11, respectively. My nephew has been into skateboarding lately, so I got him a new board for no other reason than that. He pestered me to take him to the skate park to try it out. I told him that was okay, but he had to stay within earshot of me. The reason behind this was because when I was growing up, in that area, it was really scummy. It's improved astronomically over the past decades. But what can I say? I have trust issues. I watched him like a hawk while he rode his new skateboard. My niece was sitting next to me playing with a naked ass Barbie that I had bought her. It was close, but at least she wasn't playing with an iPad. I was timing my nephew. I didn't really want to stay more than an hour, but then I saw he was having fun. I periodically extended the time, 
as the sun was about to go down, I went ahead and called him back over. My niece decided it was time to go to the bathroom. I, of course, not knowing how to be an adult around children, I told her to wait until we got through 45 minutes of traffic at the freeway and drove eight more miles to my house. I know, my dumbass did the math and I decided it was wrong, so I took her to the public bathroom near the parking lot. My nephew went into the men's room while I went ahead and took my niece into the ladies' room. The bathroom by itself is enough of a creepy encounter. Gang graffiti, satanic symbols, whole rows of toilet paper casually sitting in the toilet bowl and cracked mirrors. Spoiler, she didn't have to go after seeing the bathroom. I still made her wash her hands as she was rolling around in toxic waste. As her and I exit the bathroom, I see my nephew shooting the shit with some older man. Yes, man. He had moved significantly away from the bathroom, and I had to do a light jog while dragging an eight-year-old behind me by the hand. As I'm trotting with my eight-year-old luggage, I can clearly hear the man say, Yeah, I remember your dad. We went to the same school together. Why don't you give me your number? so we can all catch up. Bro. First of all, I was a year ahead of my brother-in-law in school. Don't remember some creepy late 40s guy in either of our grades. Second of all, just what the hell? I couldn't have heard that right. I got between them and told him to get away from my nephew. I also told my nephew that it was time for us to go home and to get in my car. The guy said he was just talking to him. I impolitely told him that if he went near either of them again, his genitalia would be rolling around my purse near my lipstick. I know that sounds harsh, but I don't care. I actually think I underreacted. This man, I swear, actually had the audacity to ask me if I had a teen pregnancy or having kids that age. Then also told me that I looked too pretty to have two kids. He then asked me my name and how old I was. I'm like, okay, you struck out with my nephew, so now you want to take a run at me? I got into my car and stayed put with the engine on to see if I could see what vehicle he was in to grab a license plate. A few minutes later, I just drove off because I wanted the two kids to be away from the whole situation. I did not want to frighten them. Through four years in the military and six years as a sheriff's deputy, I have learned that almost nobody can truly be trusted. The trauma that I faced in my own lifetime was enough to make me resilient. Hell, I still carry decoy money in my wallet and keep the rest in my bra. I still carry a pistol and there's almost always a knife on my belt. I told my sister and brother-in-law about the guy, and they filed a police report. In my opinion, the report didn't seem very thorough. They also said they would have a talk with Mr. Nephew, which I offered to be there for. But apparently, my views cannot be articulated correctly for a child, which I guess I understand. Anyways, crisis avoided. I just hope this guy is looked into and something is done, at least an investigation. At this point, I can only hold out hope. Anyways, I've taken up enough of your time. Thank you for listening to my story. Okay, so for context of this story, I live in a pretty rural area. We live on the outskirts of our town, which already is small compared to the populations of the other towns in California. We're about 15 minutes from the small town and 40 minutes from the main city. We live down a dirt road with some neighbors. Our house has no other fences attached to ours, and on two sides of the house is only fields and dirt roads, one side having a single house in the field. The other two sides have a couple neighbors down other roads, and nobody really interacts out there. 
except my dad talking to two of them sometimes. I was probably 12 when this happened. I had low self-esteem and wanted to start exercising more. I had been enrolled in a charter school due to bullying. Yes, that played into my self-esteem, but let's go on with the story. So I didn't really have many ways of exercising besides on the treadmill that we owned. I wanted to start getting fresh air too, so my mom suggested that since we live out here, that it would be peaceful to take walks down the dirt road. I agreed, even though I was stubborn about it half the time, but we began walking and usually would go to the mid-late afternoon when it would start actually cooling down outside, but was still light. In case it got dark, we took our flashlights too. Being out here, it was notorious for stray dogs to sometimes make their way out here, and we would carry pepper spray and a mini bat just in case one got vicious. However, a dog will play into this story. One day, me and my mom decided to go out on a walk in the later of the afternoon. So me and my mom took off and started walking down the road. When you walk about a quarter of a mile down the road, you start to come towards a little cross-section. There's a road going left to the highway, a road going right to the neighbor's house, or the road going straight down to a utility road. Me and my mom discussed walking down the utility road to get a good walk-in since it went on for a while. When we started getting to the crossroad, this dog came out of literally nowhere. We were looking at it, and it was in the center of the road, staring at us. Me and my mom looked at it, and my mom said that she's got this feeling in her stomach that we needed to turn around and walk home. So she grabbed my arm and started leading me back home, and then let go so that we could walk. We were in the midst of walking when she looks ahead and stops to stare at something. I ask what she's looking at, and she points. A white car pulled up to our fence and quickly backed up and shot down the road on the side of our house. Mind you, nobody ever goes down this road except one old man that we know. Anyone else who does usually is scoping out my dad's tools to steal. My mom said she felt a bit uneasy because of it and pulled me to the edge of the dirt road, almost into the field. The car had driven to the highway and left, or so we thought. We continued walking back to our house when this car comes back and drives down the road we were walking alongside. I caught a glimpse and it was this smaller white car with the black tenant windows that you could not see through. My mom instantly got a feeling of impending doom and pulled me into the field. Not too far, but far enough. We kept walking through the field towards our house, getting closer now, when this car comes back down the road. My mother stops me in my tracks to see what the car is doing, and it drives back to our house and starts driving around it super fast. For context, we have a random road and area that goes around our yard on our property. My mom waits until the car drives back down the side road, and she tells me we need to start running. So that's what we did. We started running through the field, getting to one of the little sections near my yard. The car comes back and drives down the dirt road, trying to cut us off. Me and my mom are panicking at this point and have no idea who this is and why they were acting like this. The car circles around again, and my mom drags me to further to the right, I think, of where we were, and told me that we were going to run down into the ditch. We get down in the ditch, and the car comes back around and pulls to the edge of the dirt where we were. The front of the car was facing us, and all I could think about was that if it drove down, it would hit me and my mom and probably kill us both. My mom quickly put her arm in front of me and stood dead still while I was literally horrified and dropped our flashlight and I think my water bottle. The car was getting ready to drive down where we were 
and then suddenly they backed up and drove around the yard, going back down the side road to the highway. Me and my mom felt like our souls had left our bodies, and she tells me to run, do not look back, and get to the front gate. I ran up the ditch, feeling my heart pounding. I run around the yard and towards the front gate, flinging it open, and I started running towards the front door. I did not hear my mom behind me. I was running to the door to open it, right when I looked over and saw the car coming back down the side road. I ran into the house, trying to catch my breath. I saw the car drive down the road, and I didn't see my mom, so I was panicking. I ran towards the sliding glass door, and suddenly, my mom comes running towards it and flings it open, running in and locking it. She tells me to go lock the front door while I try to catch my breath and tell her I was scared because I had no idea where she was. She went to chug some water from the fridge and told me that when I was running, she was trying to shut the front gate when she noticed the car coming back down the road. She said she knew she wouldn't have time to follow me to the door, so she ran behind my sister's car to stay out of view of the other one. And when it drove back down the road, she took the opportunity to run to the back door since I was closer to my sister's car. It's crazy to think that if we hadn't seen that dog standing there in the crossroad and decided to turn back, that we may have been run down. Fortunately, we haven't seen that car again and think it may have just been some crazy people or druggies who just so happened to come down our road that day. This happened to me when I was just 13 years of age. For some background, I had switched to another school that was further away from home. And now, instead of just taking only one bus, I had to take a bus, a train, and then another bus to get there. With my new longer commute, I had to leave the house at around 7 a.m. if I wanted to be there for 8.30 a.m. For the most part, I was never worried about safety since public transit was busy in the morning. As I got off the train, I had to cross a big bridge in order to reach the area with the different bus routes. There were three major ones, but it didn't matter which one I got on, as they all passed the school before breaking off into separate directions. So one morning, as I was waiting for one of the buses to show up, some random construction worker, also waiting for a bus, started talking to me. He looked about mid-30s. I didn't think much of it, as I was easy to have a conversation with. I started seeing him more frequently at the bus area, and I began to find it a bit strange because he would always compliment me. He'd say I had a cool bag or a nice jacket at first, but he never said anything to raise my red flags. Things started to get weird pretty quick, and he would start complimenting my features saying that I had pretty eyes or a cute smile. I was beginning to get a bit uncomfortable, but again, I also brushed it off and chose to start avoiding him. I never thought too much of my own safety, as there were people around and I had a cell phone, just in case I had to call my parents or the police. I didn't see the guy for a few days, so I began to think I was in the clear and forgot about him. Then things really began to escalate. I was sitting by myself with my earbuds in when suddenly someone tapped me on my shoulder and proceeded to sit right beside me. It was the guy, and now he's talking to me like we are friends. I was really uncomfortable, trying to dismiss him and went to walk away to the other side of the bus area. But that's when he said something that really caught me off guard. He just casually turns to me like it's nothing and says, What would you do if I tied you up and never let you go? I was generally appalled. I got up from the bench and started walking away. He got up and started to follow behind me. When, thankfully, two buses pulled in, 
he of course followed me onto the bus, and I wasn't having it. So I got off and hopped onto the second one. If he followed me again, I was going to tell the bus driver I needed help, but the guy didn't. I was so damn confused. I went to school, and the first thing I did was tell my friends about what had happened. I really did not understand the severity of the situation at first because I was a 13-year-old dude and I never thought this thing happened to guys. As I was telling the story, I was kind of downplaying it because nothing bad actually happened in my eyes and there were no real repercussions. Everyone gave me a dumbfounded stare as no one knew what to say. Then, one of the teachers overheard me, which I'm not surprised, I was a loud kid, and in a look of shock, brought me to the principal's office. So I missed the entire first period of the day explaining what happened to the principal and a police officer. My parents at first were really confused on why I didn't mention anything about the weird guy before. I was driven to school the next few days until a police officer came over to talk to me and my parents. He said that they found the guy on the transit cameras and were able to track him down and talk to him. There wasn't too much the officer could do aside from telling him to stay away from me since he technically didn't do anything illegal. The officer did tell me that they would be monitoring the train station around that time as well and that if the guy ever approaches or talks to me to call 911. I saw him like two or three times after, and he never spoke to me or even looked at me, which I was very grateful for. I'm just glad nothing major came from it. But this did really open my eyes a lot about being more aware of my surroundings in public. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true creepy encounter stories. I'd like to take a moment and give a very special shout out to the reform members of Back to Ashes. Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Tina Mee, Colt Stone Wolf, Luz Crispin, C.A.G., Denise S., Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma D.W., Christy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's niece. I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for being a part of the Back to Ashes family. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this selection. In the meantime, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.